What is up everyone, P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Classic Live Album War. Today we've got two combatants that I'm sure many of you are waiting. When is When are these two going to pop up? Who are they going to go against? Well, you know what, I'm putting them against each other today. We've got on one side of the ring, we've got the mighty Kiss Alive from 1975. And on the other, we've got Cheap Trick at Budokan. From 1979, at least 1979 here in the U.S., 78 in Japan. All right. This, of course, you can see here the complete concert. Right. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. The original at Budokan was a single LP release. Should have been longer, right? Well, here you got it. So if you've been lucky enough to grab this, you've got the whole shebang. Uh, this, of course, a double album set. So we're going to start with the earlier one first. All right, now let's just get the elephant out of the room first. I know there's many of you going to be saying, oh, but come on, you know, how live is Kiss Alive? Well, it depends on who you talk to, right? There's plenty of people who say that uh, much of this has been doctored up in the studio. Eddie Kramer will go and tell you that uh, he actually had, you know, had them come in and re-record some vocals, re-record some guitar parts, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. I've actually seen the uh, the DVD of the Cobo Hall footage, okay, that a lot of this stuff was taken from. It's pretty close. Yeah, you can tell they fixed up some of the vocals and a couple of bad guitar parts in here and there. But it's the essence of what were those shows is basically the same, okay? But there's no denying that this is one of the greatest live albums of all time because it basically took uh, some great material by the band, which on the studio albums is really good, but missing that some, a little extra something, okay, and kind of shooting it into the stratosphere, all right? Because I don't think there's many people who will argue that most of the versions of these songs on this album totally blow away the studio versions, okay? And we're going to talk about them now. So I personally think that the this is, for me anyway, this is like the definitive Kiss album. This is the album that turned me on to Kiss. This is the album that turned me on to heavy music, right? And it's just, and all of these songs sound so much better here on this live album than they do on the studio album. So it kicks off with Deuce, one of the best opening tracks on any album, studio or live. Deuce just kills here. Strutter, full of energy. Got to choose. Great, great stuff. Hotter than hell. It's hot. <laughs> Firehouse is amazing on here. Uh, nothing to lose with those great Peter Chris vocals on there. Uh, Come on and love me. Parasite is so heavy on here. I love Parasite in here. And of course, She, okay, which ends off uh, side one or disc one, uh, side two of the LP. Let's kind of get back to think the LP thinking, right? Uh, she is just killer on here. Really, really good. Love the riffs on that. Uh, over on disc two, the beginning of side three and the LPs is my personal favorite Kiss song, Watching You, which again, so much better on here than on the Hotter Than Hell album. It's great as it is on there too. It's just amazing on here. Uh, 100,000 Years, lengthy, lengthy, lengthy on here. Black Diamond, Kills. Peter Chris again on the lead vocals, awesome. Uh, Rock Bottom, Cold Gin, all right. A great Ace Frehley song sung expertly by Gene Simmons here. Uh, rock and roll all night and party every day, of course, and then let me go rock and roll. Uh, just kind of perfection start to finish. Just this was what Kiss was all about back in the day. And, of course, you know, if you had the original LP, you got all those photographs. You open up the double album, great, great stuff. You know, you got some of the Kiss Army folks there. Killer stuff. Killer album legendary for a reason, as is this. Cheap Trick of Budokan. I remember well, when I first heard the Budokan album, I really wasn't all that aware of who Cheap Trick were. I mean, you know, you heard the name. Their first couple albums did okay, just like Kiss. Uh, in both instances, both of these bands, these live albums really broke them worldwide. Okay, they were more of like a, a small-time, I don't want to say cult act, but they were they were popular but not a mega band, either one, by any means. Uh, and, you know, Cheap Trick was... The, the Japanese totally took to these guys, not surprisingly. I don't understand why America didn't take to these guys instantly like Japan did because everything about Cheap Trick's music is accessible. It's fun. Pop hooks with hard rock guitars, man. Call it power pop. Call it whatever you want, man. The Cheap Trick formula is just winner. Winning, winner. It's just it's it's great stuff. So, uh, But it took the At Budokan album 
all right, with all the great amped up versions of some of their early classics, screaming Japanese fans, whether that was actually how it went there or not, because I know Japanese fans are pretty damn quiet, so I kind of always thought that was a little strange, right? So whether that's fake crowd noise or not, I don't know, uh, but you can tell they were totally into the concert, and a lot of great, great Cheap Trick material on here. Really exuberant performances. Great vocals by Robin Zander, uh, Rick Nielsen, you know, Tom Peterson, Bunny Carlos. Just a really tight, tight band. Okay. And you got some great stuff on here. You got Hello. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Hello there, ladies and gents. Are you ready to rock? Uh, what else? Come on, come on. Hello, kitties. I love that song. One of my favorite Cheap Trick tunes. Hello, kitties. Great stuff. Great stuff. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Big eyes. And again, some of the, if, if you don't have this deluxe edition, some of you are probably thinking, oh, I don't remember that on the original at Budokans because they left it off, right? Uh, big eyes, great on here. Uh, look out, killer. Downed. Can't hold on. Oh, Caroline. <laughs> uh, what else? Surrender, of course. What else you got? Need your love, need your love, need your love. Awesome on here. Really like it. High Roller. All right. Southern Girls. Southern Girls is a lot of fun. Again, why they left that off the original album, I'll never know. Uh, I Want You to Want Me, of course. The huge, huge hit, that and Surrender. Uh, California Man. I'm a California Man. Again, just on stage, man. Just that tune just takes off. Uh, what else? Good Night. Ain't That a Shame. Another hit from the album. Clock Strikes 10. It's a Saturday night. All right. And that kind of finishes it all off there. Two discs, all sorts of up-tempo, rocking, cheap trick stuff. So uh, what do I think when I kind of put these two side by side? Well, you know, I love them both. Probably love them both for different reasons, obviously. Um, you know, for me, this is a, you know, like kind of like a, I don't, I don't want to say a knockout, but... It, it's a spirited fight all the way to the end almost. The ninth round, though, Kiss is just wore down Cheap Trick. Gets the TKO, referee stops and says, Cheap Trick, you guys got to live and fight another day. Uh, but that's no disrespect to this because, man, I this is just a really fun, fun album. One of the all-time great, like, party live albums, right? I mean, who doesn't like Cheap Trick? You could basically put this on, you know, there's a lot of people who don't like Kiss, I get that. But you could basically put this on at any party with people of all ages and musical likes and what have you, and, and almost anybody will get into this. Not quite so with Kiss, but that's okay. You got to be, you know, there's, uh, I know there's going to be a lot of, there's a lot of Kiss haters on this channel, right? A lot of people who, you know, they're prog fans or they're like, you know, more sophisticated metal fans. And they're like, oh, Kiss is garbage, blah, blah, blah. I can't believe you're even talking to them in the same breath as Cheap Trick or anybody else for that matter matter you know whatever i love kiss especially the early kiss to me this is one of the best live albums of all time so it's getting my preference here but i'm not the one casting the ultimate vote right you guys have to vote so go up in the upper right hand corner you're going to see a little white circle a little white bubble with an i in the middle of it and i mean the letter i not an i uh click on that It'll give you the choice to vote. If you're someone who jumps on this uh, video the second I posted it, you got to give me a couple minutes to get the poll hooked up in there because I can't do it automatically as I post these. So uh, if you're on here, you don't see the little circle with the eye, just give me two, three minutes, refresh. It'll be there, okay? You can also go on our Facebook and poll. The poll is running right now. Kiss is kind of running away with it, but I kind of ex expected that, but we got a lot of Cheap Trick fans there as well. So whether you love either or or hate either or whatever it doesn't matter tell us why you love the one you love okay and remember there's no right or wrong answers here people if you and guys if, if we got some kiss folk, kiss non kiss fans out there please come on just be nice all right a lot of us do like kiss all right if you don't that's cool but no reason to go on and bash bash the album or bash other people just because they might prefer kiss over cheap trick right it's just a matter of preference we're all friends here we all like what we like it's just a way to talk about two legendary legendary live albums and we'll see which one makes it to the second round to go on and battle all those other great live albums the ones we've that have won so far and the ones that still have yet to get into circulation here so uh this is on the web at www.seatranquilly.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we're here on youtube every damn day in case you guys missed the live video that we did Early, we did a live stream earlier. If anybody is going to King Crimson in New York City Saturday night at Radio City Music Hall, we'd love to run into you. Jeff Young, my good buddy Jeff JY, ex of Megadeth, 
solo artist and lead guitarist for Fleshy will be with me and we will be attending King Crimson together. Uh, we'll be hanging out uh, in NYC somewhere around the, uh, the venue before the show. If not, maybe we'll run into you somewhere inside, okay? But uh, if I don't get to see any of you and you are attending, enjoy the show. I saw King Crimson back in late 2017. They were amazing, and uh, I'm sure they will be the same on Saturday night. So uh, thanks again, guys. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.